Ang unang bahagi ng online course ay binubuo ng mga sumusunod na paksa. 1. Conversion to Organic Crop Production 2. Length of Crop Conversion Period 3. Maintenance of Organic Management and 4. Split and Parallel Production Conversion to Organic Crop Production Ang probisyon na ito ng pamantayan ay tumatalakay sa mga requirements o dapat sundin ng sino mang nagnanais na i-convert ang kanyang lupang sakahan mula sa conventional farming patungong organic farming. Ayon sa 4.1.1 The operator shall follow and meet the minimum requirements of this standard from the beginning of the conversion period onwards. The start of the conversion period shall be calculated from the date of the documented start of organic management and the filing of the application for certification to the competent authority agency or an organic certification body or OCB. Upang bigyan ito ng paliwanag, ibig sabihin, upang malaman ang required na conversion period ng isang sakahan, Kailangan malaman ng inspector kung anong eksaktong taon nagsimula ang magsasakang mag-organic farming, ito ay malalaman sa pamamagitan. Nang pag-check ng Organic Management Plan o OMP, ito ay sa kadahilanang nakapaloob sa OMP ang tinatawag na conversion plan at ang taon kung kailan eksaktong nagsimulang mag-organic farming ang magsasaka na magtatakda ng conversion period. Gayunpaman, ayon sa 4.1.2, an exemption to this requirement which is the reduction of the conversion period, may be approved by the competent authority agency or an OCB. When there is verifiable evidence of no use of known permitted inputs or implementation of activities or practices allowed in organic agriculture. Ibig sabihin, papahintulutan ng isang inspector na magkaroon ng reduction of conversion period o di kaya ay walang conversion period kung mapapatunayan ng magsasaka na walang nailagay na nakalalasong pestesidyo at pataba sa kanyang lupang sakahan. Ngunit, gaano nga ba katagal o kahaba ang conversion period? Ayon sa 4.2.1, ang length of conversion period ng isang annual crops ay dapat umabot ng 12 months, habang 18 months naman ang dapat sa perennial crops. Subalit, ayon sa 4.2.2, the conversion period can be extended based on the identification and evaluation of the competent authority agency or an OCB on the relevant issues and risks such as, but not limited to, pesticides heavy metals, and nitrate accumulation. Kaya naman, kung sa panahon ng inspection ay may nakitang ebendensya ng paggamit ng mga nasabing substances, ay dapat irekomenda ang pagpapahaba ng conversion period batay sa pagsasagawa ng risk analysis. Sakali namang e-claim ng magsasaka na siya ay nag-o-organic farming simula sa isang partikular na taon. Halimbawa, ang lupang sakahan ay organic simula ng taong 2017, ang inspector ay dapat humingi ng dokumento bilang patunay sa pahayag. Ang dokumentong hihingin ay ang magiging basehan upang mapababa ang conversion period. Ayon sa 4.2.3, any of the following written evidence is required to be submitted to grant reduction of the prescribed conversion period. Una, official attestation from the competent authority agency, national or local, or research institution on noon application of prohibited inputs for the past two years. Bilang inspector, mahalaga na makita sa dokumento ang mga katagang. Noon application of prohibited inputs for the past two years, sapagkat ito ang magpapatunay na ang lupang sakahan ay organic na or na i-convert na sa organic. Ikalawa, kung walang makuha or mapakitang certification, ay maari din namang mag-provide ng notarized affidavit from two neighbors as proof that the land was cultivated under practices allowed for organic agriculture for the past two years. Mahalagang tandaan, base sa 4.3, converted areas and production areas should not be switched back and forth from organic and non-organic management. Exceptions to this may only be made in cases where compelling reasons to cease organic. Management on the certified organic land are present. In these cases, conversion requirements shall apply. Sa madaling sabi, hinihikayat na huwag magpapalit-palat ng pamamaraan. Subalit, kung kinakailangan ibalik mula sa organic practices pabalik sa Conventional dahil sa mga di inaasahang pangyayari, gaya na lamang ng pag-atake ng mga peste, na kinakailangan ng mag-spray or lagyan ng mga kemikal na pestesidyo, ito ay pahihitulutan, sa kondisyon na ito ay sasa ilalim sa isang conversion period. Paano nga kaya kung merong parallel production or split production sa isang organikong sakahan? Subalit, bago natin ito talakayin ay atin munang panoorin ang video upang ating malaman ang pinagkaiba ng parallel at ng split production.
Split production is when crops are grown both conventionally and organic by the same operation. For example, a farm could be growing certified organic tomatoes and conventional kale. Now parallel production is when the same crop is produced both organically and conventionally by the same operation on the same farm. Transitional production is when the crops are managed organically, but they're not eligible to be harvested or sold as organic until the land becomes eligible. The land's not eligible until three years have passed since the last application of a prohibited substance. In split operations, it is essential that the farmer maintains the organic integrity of the crop by preventing contact with prohibited substances and co-mingling with non-organic crops. And this can be verified by addressing the specific organic control points of the operation where possible contamination or co-mingling could occur, such as if the farmer is using the same equipment for both organic and conventional production. The farmer can prevent contact with prohibited substances by adequately cleaning the equipment prior to using it on the organic fields and keep documentation for the certifier to verify. Maintaining organic integrity extends to the storage and transportation of the crops, which is why separation and proper labeling is key. Ngayong alam na natin ang pinagkaiba ng parallel at split production at ang pagkakaroon nito ay pinapahintulutan ng ating pamantayan. Ating alamin kung ano ang mga kinakailangang gawin upang mapanatili ang integridad ng sakahan. Una, proper demarcation and identification of organically managed production areas are in place. Organically managed production areas shall be inspected for compliance with organic certification. Ibig sabihin, dapat ay makikita at makikilala ang organic sa conventional areas. Ito ay dapat may physical separation at identified ng magsasaka. Bilang inspector, makikita ito sa pamamagitan ng paghahanap ng barrier o di kaya ay nakareflect sa mapa. Ikalawa, there is a clear boundary between organic and non-organic units including for similar and indistinguishable varieties. Ikatlo, organically managed production areas are identifiable and should be inspected for certification. Dito ay sinasabi ng ating pamantayan na dapat ay may clear boundary sa pagitan ng organic at conventional areas. Gayun din, para sa mga may kaparehas na mga tanim, mahalaga din na ang dalawang areas ay makikita sa panahon ng inspection. At ang huli, all farm records and accounting are identifiable for both farming systems. Sinasabi lamang ng ating pamantayan na dapat ay may makikita na magkaiba at magkabukod na records ang dalawang farm practices sa panahon ng inspection. Dito natatapos ang ating unang paksa. Tandaan, ang conversion period ay kinakailangan upang masiguro ang integridad ng isang lupang sakahan lalo na kung dati itong conventional. Mahalaga din ang pagbibigay ng mga patunay kagaya ng certification or written attestation na nagsasaad na ang sakahan ay hindi nalagyan ng nakal alasong chemical na pestesidyo o pataba. Gayun din, ang pagkakaroon ng parallel at split production ay aprobado ng pamantayan basta ito ay properly demarcated at identified.